These two images of garment industry workers were created in the same period, yet they tell different stories about work using different techniques. In both images, we see workers sitting at sewing machines across from each other in a fairly cramped space. In William Grapper's lithograph, a foreman is both present and one of the dominant figures in the picture. His scowling face creates a feeling of tension, as does the posture of the worker in the foreground. That feeling is reinforced by the expressions and postures of the workers in the background. Grapper's shading of the worker in front also adds to the mood. His literal darkness draws our attention and creates a feeling of anger or despair. While the people and place represented are recognizable and believable, the image is clearly not intended to be objective. The artist has exaggerated the difference in size between the worker and foreman in the foreground and those in the background. The features of the two men in the foreground are emphasized, dramatizing their attitudes. The floorboards are at odd angles, and the table on the right is pictured as if we were looking straight down on it. These distortions create a stronger sense of atmosphere and feeling than a more objective image could. In that sense, we might say that the image represents the workplace accurately because it captures not only what it looks like, but also how it feels. Gropper's image shows us that this work is hard and the workplace is far from pleasant. The title sweatshop emphasizes that, since the term generally refers to a factory in which workers are pushed or sweated to work very hard but are not paid much. Jack Delano's photograph also shows us workers bent over machines, but the workplace does not feel as oppressive. Indeed, the photo does not convey a strong sense of emotion. Delano focuses on the line of workers, giving us a sense of the amount of space and light in the factory, as well as making clear that both men and women, all white, work here. We don't get a clear view of most of the workers' faces, though we can see the concentration and effort on the faces of the woman on the left and the man on the right. No supervisor is present here, nor do we see what is happening just beyond this group of workers. The caption suggests that this photo is intended to document the workplace. It identifies a specific factory in a specific place and provides brief information on who the workers were. But the meaning of these representations does not rest only in the images themselves, or even in the images and their captions. To fully understand them, we have to think about their context, why they were created, and how they were used at the time. We also have to consider how our own assumptions might shape the way we view them. William Grapper spent much of the 1930s creating drawings, prints, and paintings in the social realist mode. Like many artists of the period, he used images to reveal and comment on social problems. He contributed cartoons to a variety of publications, from mainstream newspapers to leftist periodicals like The Daily Worker and New Masses, which he helped to found. He also created murals of workplace scenes for several public buildings, as well as a series of drawings of American folk heroes depicting most as muscular men of action. Even without information on why he created this specific print, we can understand that Gropper came to the work of creating images with a long-standing interest in labor and a concern for social justice. Some biographical information can deepen our understanding of this image. Gropper's parents both worked in sweatshops when he was a child, and one of his aunts was killed in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire in 1911. So his critical perspective on this kind of work comes not only from his politics, but also from personal experience. Jack Delano worked for the Farm Security Administration, a U.S. government organization that, among other things, devoted considerable resources to documenting working conditions, as well as the daily lives of workers, especially farmers and migrant laborers, during the 1930s and 40s. But neither the FSA nor Delano was interested only in documentation. The mission of the FSA was to use photography and other tools to support workers and promote the efforts of New Deal projects to rebuild the American economy. So while Delano was working in a different situation than Gropper's, 
And while he may not have been as involved in radical politics, he also viewed his work as offering not just documentation, but also commentary. Delano's situation explains why the caption on the photo of the garment factory notes that the workers pictured came from nearby farms. We also need to consider how these images were seen and used when they were first created. Clapper's lithograph was one of a series of images he created of sweatshops, some of which appeared in leftist magazines and exhibits of art that showed the struggles of workers during the 1930s. Delano's photo was probably viewed only within the FSA as part of a much larger collection of images of work on farms and in factories and as part of the effort to demonstrate both the dignity and hard work of the people pictured and the importance of the government programs that provided them with jobs. As 21st century viewers, we come to these images from a very different perspective than their original audiences. We may not have worked in a factory or know anyone who does. Today, most clothing is manufactured in Southeast Asia or Africa, and many U.S. garment factories have closed over the last few decades, as have factories of other kinds. We may feel nostalgia about factory work, or resentment about the loss of such jobs, or relief that we no longer have to do that kind of work. Whatever our feeling about or relationship with the subject depicted, it will shape our response to these images. Our responses are affected by assumptions we make based on the format and style of an image. For example, many people assume that photographs are inherently objective, while drawings are inherently subjective. This may be especially true with black and white photos. Given these assumptions, we might see Delano's photograph as an accurate and unbiased representation of work. On the other hand, the cartoon style of Gropper's work is similar to what we're used to seeing in political cartoons, so we might see it as offering a more forceful commentary. As these examples show, reading images well involves thinking about the same issues we consider with stories. What does the image show? How is the image organized? Why was it created? Who made it? How is it published or exhibited? How do my own assumptions or experiences influence my response?